Hello and welcome back to the channel with Toon and Lee in Thailand. Today I'd just like to give you a very brief insight into a common practice here that you see a lot of in um, rural parts of Thailand. And it's a, it's a sad state of affairs. So what's happened? Toon's just shot off to the hospital to get her blood test results. And uh, just before she left, the old combine harvesters tipped up to um, harvest the rice for um, a few neighbouring rice farmers. I uh, said to her, look, we need loads and loads of rice straw. We'll get in there as soon as they've finished. And uh, have the lot, the farmers don't normally mind. And they haven't even finished the combining. Uh, there they are. Just behind the banana tree way over there. And what they're actually doing is burning behind as it goes along. I mean, I know I want the straw, but not from a selfish point of view. I, I, I understand their thought process, why they do it. They want to get new rice in there straight away. So once this is burned today, the tractors will be in tomorrow. Uh, first cut, uh, and then they'll chop it up all fine. Then they'll uh, raise the water levels, and the rice will be sown within about three days. Now, we could have gone and asked them and said, look, can we come and get all your rice, uh, your rice straw? And they would have said yes, but that would take us about two weeks non-stop to collect all that. Last year we did this little rice paddy down, just down here next door, and that took me the best part of three or four days to get all that out. So, um, you know, you can't expect rice farmers to wait around for a week while someone's taking their rice straw. Yeah, we could have offered them, offered them a, a sweetener, but I, I can't warrant paying a farmer for his rice straw and spend a week or two getting the, the straw off him. So, um, it's just such a waste of resources and of course the guys are killing their soil and they know it. It's been, there was a big push a few years ago educating rice farmers not to burn off. Um, you're killing all the good microbes and fungi and everything and well, all, all your organisms in your soils, your, your top layers of soil are just getting decimated. Um, I mean if they didn't want to collect it up they could have let it rot for a week and then dig it in with the tractor but these people they, they want to take advantage of the uh, the wet weather that we've, we've finally got so it's it's harvest, burn, dig, plant again but I'm convinced this is one of the reasons that um, a lot of crops in uh, Thailand that are doing this sort of practice, sugarcane as well, the crop yield just goes down year upon year upon year and uh, I'm, I'm totally convinced that it, it, it's down to depletion of the, the topsoil because nothing, absolutely nothing is added back to the soil around here on people's farms. The only thing that is added comes out of a bag that's been bought from a shop and, it, and, it, and it's, uh, it's a lot of synthetic stuff. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong, when you walk around their farms, there's no, there's no weeds in their rice and there's no bugs on their rice. It looks nice and clean and healthy, but um, I, I, I don't think it is healthy. When you, when you look at the soil, there's no organic matter in it at all. That's the same as our, the majority of our land, but it is changing here. So, anyway, I thought I'd just give you a quick insight into a, one of the many farming practices that's a bit of an eye-opener out here. Uh, whew. Weedy, but everything happy. And I can't remember the last time we sprayed anything, guys. So, it can be done. It takes a while. It takes a little bit of getting used to getting your head round seeing weeds. But now we've got the goats and we'll be getting more goats. Uh, we're just starting to integrate them with the farm. They're coming out with us more and more now, so they're getting used to us and the farm. Uh, 
we'll see, start to see a big improvement on this. So of course, you know, they'll, they'll be keeping everything mowed down or the majority of stuff they'll be browsing on and uh, they'll be fertilizing as they go. I'm also seriously contemplating incorporating our chickens and ducks into certain areas that we want um, improving upon by the use of uh, poultry tractors, you know, your, your duck tractors or your, your chicken tractors. When I say poultry tractors, they don't drive them, that's my job. It's, a, it's, it's sort of like a glorified poultry coop on wheels with a bit of a run outside or you can just use some temporary fencing. So we're going we're gonna to be doing that and uh, clearing separate zones. Of course, people can't do that around here because there's so few people living on their farms. A lot of them are living in the village and then travel down here a couple of times a day. So they can't, if they leave livestock here, they're, they're, they're gone. Someone tried doing it once before and uh, they had a right old selection and uh, came down one morning and the whole lot was gone. So if you're going to have livestock, including fish, that sort of thing as well, you've got to be here. So it's, I try not to get on my high horse now. I mean, we, we did burn, we have burned stuff off in the past. Uh, and I do burn now, but it's, it's to create um, biochar and charcoal and, and potash, that sort of thing. We don't, we don't burn the land now. There you go. A little bit sad, a bit of an eye-opener maybe. It's a missed opportunity in my book. I'm sure if you let that decompose for not too long, I mean the sun just bakes it and then dig it in, you, you'll probably save save that money in, in, the, in the week that you've left it on top of the soil drying out I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll have, you'll have saved some in fertiliser and that sort of thing but there you go so if you've only watched a few of our videos, we've got nearly 300 now and uh, most of them are about farming so take a butcher's on there right guys, I've got to get busy Got to feed me ducks.